In Mirza Hashem, we'll continue our discussion here, which is on page Zion, if you have the page, it's about Minchas Nesachim. And what we've said so far, just to summarize, is that there's a solace that comes together with Karbanas Behema, and that's called Minchas Nesachim. And then when you add to the solace, Yayin, Le Nisuch, Al Gabi Mizbeach, that's called Nesachim Stam. When we, as we said, the terminology Nesachim indicates Niske Yayin. And we pointed out that all Karbanos that come from a Behema, whether they're Ola or Shlom, whether they are a carbon of a Yachid or a carbon of a Tzibur, they require Nesachim, with the exception of two categories that don't usually generate the Sochim, but they do in the case of a, a Mitzorah, and that's Chatos and Osham of a Mitzorah, that normally a Chatos or an Osham does not generate the Sochim, but in the case of Mitzorah, who brings many different Karbonos, amongst them a Chatos and an Osham, those Karbonos, the Chatos of a Mitzorah, the Osham of a Mitzorah, have to be accompanied by Niske Yayin. And amongst the shlamin that always require nesachim, the exceptions to the rule of bechar master of nesachim. Now we have a brisa of the menachas bemdal, which presents a very fundamental machlokas. As I don't have to tell you that in kachim, in hakravas karbonos, what's critical is the seder, the sequence. Well, what is the sequence in the case of mincha and nesachim? What comes first, the mincha and then we makriv the nesachim or the other way around? And Rebbe has a unique shita that first we start with the nesachim and then we go on with the mincha. The chachamim reject that shita and first we start with the mincha and then with the nesachim. The logic of the chachamim is intuitive because the nesachim are accompaniments to the mincha. And in fact, there is an entity called a carbon minch without nesachim, as we saw in various cases like katas and osham, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In the case where the nesachim come together with the minachos, then it makes sense that you start with the minachos and then you go on to the nesachim. But we'll keep in mind that Rebbe derives a very radical conclusion, and he places the nesachim first before the minch. Now, with regard to a minchas nesachim, then what we're talking about is low tnufa, low agasha, low levona. And what we're saying is that the normal hakrabos that apply to all the zvachim that include Tnufa, Hagasha, Levona, none of these apply to Minchas Nisachim. Well, let's just review. We said that a solace that comes as an accompaniment with a carbon of a behema in the cases of Olad Shlamin is called Minchas Nisachim. And he says the following. With regard to a carbon mincha, we have our luck of kulo kolil al gabi which means that just like we said in the case of a minchas kohen, if you recall, that it requires kulo kolil, we're going to say that yayin, the yayin that comes together with this mincha. And you do Nisach al Gabi Mizbeach, ain't no Snosa al Gabi Mizbeach. You and I would think that we take the Yayin and we pour it directly onto the Mizbeach. No, that's not the Allah. But rather, Yotskin Oso Besefel, we pour the Yayin for the Nesachim into a special flask, which is called a Sefel. And that Sefel, was like a funnel that was attached to the Mizbeach. He tells you exactly where in the Mizbeach it was. It was Bekeren 
It was at one of the corners of this bear. Which one? Maravis Dromis. So it's on the southwestern corner of the Mizbeach. He pours the yayin of the Nesachin into the Sefer on that corner of the Mizbeach. And it rolls down Lashitin and it's taken underneath the Mizbeach. There's like a subterranean area under the Mizbeach which is called Shitin and that's where the yayin of the Nesachin goes. And here he quotes the Shita of the Ravid. We'll soon see the Ramab Shita. But the Ravid in Hilchus Maisa Karbonus Perg Beis writes that this principle of pouring Niske Yayin to the Sefel on the southwestern corner of the Mizbech, and it goes down the Shitim, applies universally to all the Sachem of all Karbonus. The Ramab disagrees. The Ramam says that only with regard to Niske Yayin, Umayin al Karbono Shal Sugos, that when the Mishnah speaks about pouring Yayin into the Sefo and it goes down the sheet, and that was a Mishnah that was limited to Chaga Sukos. On Chaga Sukos, we have a unique halach of Shitan. With regard to the Nesachim of any other carbon except for the Karbonos of Chagasukos, it would not go down the Sefel on the corner of the Nesbeah, but rather on the Yisod HaMesbeah. And he doesn't tell you exactly why that's so. Why, according to the Ramah, there is this fundamental difference between the Sefel that's on the corner of the Mizbeach as opposed to the Yisoda Mizbeach at the base of the Mizbeach. And why does the Raivu insist that when the Mishnah describes this Yayin on the Mizbeach itself in the corner of the Mizbeach and the Yayin goes down to Shitan that applies universally to all this Yayin. It's not limited to Chagasu. For that, we're going to have to learn Maseth and Menachas. But again, we're just trying to get an overview of some of the principles. Now, we talk about Nesachim. And when we talk about Nesachim, then as we said before, the term Nesachim refers to solace in Yain. And we have to now ask how much solace and how much yayin. And it all depends upon the animal. Each animal on a chart will have its own shear of nisachin. So we'll start with a keves ben shnoso. And now we're talking about a male sheep within its first year. Well, actually, after it reaches one year, but before it passes a month into its second year. So we're talking about the 11th month of its life. And the shear of Nesachim, or a Kevis Ben Shnoso, is Isaro. So we should write down on the big white board, Isaro. And that's a volume of Solace. And of course, the solace, as we discussed many times, is solace flour that comes from chitim, from wheat. It's wheat flour, very well refined, as opposed to two menachos that come from siorin. How much yayin do we need? Because as we said, the sachem are made up of both solace and yayin, revius yayin, I'm sorry, Revius Hahin. Now, Revius Hahin actually goes in two directions. There is the solace itself, and we'll see which liquid we add to the Revius of a Revius Hahin. And that's called Mwila. And then we have another Revius Hahin, which is simply Yayin. That requires Nisa. 
And the first Revi Sahin, which is added to the Soles, which is called Blila, that is Shemen. And then the other Revi Sahin is Yain. So in the case of a Kizba, Bas, Shona, or I should say Ben Shona, was a kid. I'm sorry, I said kids, but I meant to say a keves. So when we talk about a keves, Ben Shnoso, we're talking about number one, an Isaron of Soles, which is going to be mixed with a Revia Sahin of Shemin and accompanied by a Nisuch of Yain of Revia Sahin of Yain. And the laws of Blila with regard to the Revia Sahin of Shemin are very complicated are very nuanced. And there's always going to be a certain ratio of Shemen to Solas in order to fulfill Blila. So at some point, if there's a vast volume of Solas in one Kli, then that's going to be the maximum for Blila. If it goes beyond that vast volume, then we're going to have to set up another Kli and the overflow solace will be placed in a second Kli so that we can achieve Bulila in both Kalim. But be that as it may, now we're up to a Kizba. A Kizba is the same min as a Kevis, but in the female. And here, we're going to include in this category, number one, a Kizba Kana, a kizba gdola, an ez, which is a goat, katan or gadol, zachar or nekeva. Again, that, that addition only relates to the goat. It has no bearing on the kizba, because the kizba by definition is in a keva. In all the above, the shear of nesachim is identical to that of a keves ben shnasa. Which means he saw in Soles, followed the Revia Sahin Shemen, and accompanied by a Revia Sahin of Yain. And now we get to another species, another category, which is called the Ayal. The Ayal is basically the same not in terms of volumes, but in terms of the reality, it's the same as a keves, but it's not a keves ben shnoso, but rather it's a keves that matured beyond shnoso. Nichnas l'shnoso ashnia. And that's called an ayal. And now we have a double shear. We double the shear. Shnei esronim soles bolu bishlishes hahin shemen. Until now we spoke about a revias hahin. Now we upgraded to shlishes hahin. Until now we spoke about one isaron. Now we're doubling it to two isronos. And until now we spoke about a revias hahin yain. Now it's Shlishis Ahim Yayin. So that it seems that the pattern here, although I, I say this with great trepidation, but the pattern is that as the animal becomes older, and I guess with its maturity becomes stronger, more, so to speak, a powerful animal, then the shear of the sachin becomes greater. Because now we're going to jump to a more powerful animal, and that's the par. Here in this case, par, o egel, okay, the egel is a calf, bein zacharim, bein nekevos, shloshes ronin soles, so we've gone from a revias ahin shemen in the case of Arayal up to shlishes revin and in the case of the power of the eagle up to half of a hin of shemen chatsi ahin shemen. We've gone from one isaron 
to the case of the Ayala of two Isronim, to the case of the power of the Eagle two, three Isronim. And as far as the Yayin is concerned, we went from a Revius Ahin Yayin up to the case of Ayal, which was Shlishis Ahin Yayin, and now in the case of a Par or an Egel, Chatsi Ahin Yayin. Now, everything that we said until now about the Shir of Nesachim in the cases of Keves, or A's, and then we went up to Ayal, and then to Par, or Egel. All this applies for all carbonos. We're not going to differentiate between a carbon Ola, a carbon Shlomin, or for example, in the case of a Mitzorah, we have Chatos and Oshom. Im Hosef Ochiser Psulim. You know, you might say, well, let me add a little, a little extra solace, an Isaron plus, or a little bit of an extra Shemen to mix in with the solace, or extra Yayin, or let me diminish it a little bit. No, we have two Lavin here, Baltosin and Baltigra. And in both cases, you, you passle the carbon. However, there's one exception to that rule. Nisachim haboyim im ha'ola. Now, when we talk about a carbon ola, we're talking about a keves, a male shepsala, right, in his first year. And he says the following Nisachim haboyim im keves ha'ola. Aboim ha Omer. We spoke about the Omer as a special carbon mincha that comes from Si Orim, and it's accompanied by a Kevesli Ola. And with regard to the Kevesli Ola, which is the accompanying carbon to the Omer, it has its own dinim as far as the mincha is concerned. And with regard to the mincha, even though it's a keves, which normally, and almost as an absolute rule, requires an isaron of solace, a shlishis ahin of shemen, and a shlishis ahin of yayin, in the case of the nisachin, of the keves liola, of the karmana omer, it's shnei esron and solace, it's going to be a Revia Sahin and a Revia Sahin. Revia Sahin of Yayin, Revia Sahin of Shem. So it's fascinating because the Shi'urim of this particular Nisachim of a carbon that is brought from a Keves is identical with the Shi'urim of an Ayah of the Nisachim that are brought with an Ayal, where we doubled and we jacked up from Revia Sahin to Shlish Sahin. And I always say the following, you know, technically, mechanically, we could get this down and memorize it. I'm always fascinated by what the philosophy is behind it, but we don't have any, you know, any key to open up to unlock that mystery. And now, to end this whole presentation, he quotes a Rambam, as interpreted by the Radbaz, Shekosav Shebeniske Keves Omer Shlishahin Shemen. Now, Shlishahin Shemen, we have in the case one second. Until now, we said that it's Revia Sahin. Oh, so I, I may have made it, may, may, maybe I made a mistake. I'm not sure if I stand correct, but we said about the Nesachim that accompanied the Keves Liola of the Omer that we doubled it to Shneas Ronim, even though it's a Keves. And then, as far as the Yayan and the Shemen, we remain the same. 
I stand corrected, or Revia Sahir. And the Ramam says, no, once you're already doubling the solace from one Isaran to Shneas Ronin, then you embrace the status of the Ayal. And in the case of the Ayal, we have not a Revia Sahin of Yain and Shemin, but rather a Shlish Sahin of Yain and Shemin. Now, what happens when you bring a carbon ola or a carbon shlomim without bringing the accompanying nesachim? A nesachim enam ma'achim es ha-karbon. That's an amazing chiddush. El amevi adam es karbon o'ayom ves nesachim afil liachar kama yomim. If he didn't bring the nesachim immediately together with the carbon, He'll bring the carbon today without the nesachim, and days down the line, he'll bring the nesachim. Bechem, ein hasoles v'ashemin ma'achim es hayayin. The ein hayayin ma'achim es hashemin v'asoles. So when we're talking about nesachim, we have the belila of the shemin with the solas plus the niske hayayin. They're two separate entities. And that means that they're not ma'akiv one or the other. You can have niske yayin without the solas plus the shemen. You can have the shemen with the nesachim without the yayin. El yachol lahavi kol echad b'fnei atzma. And that is codified by the Mishnah in Mesech the Menachas on Daf Mem Dalit. So we have a very interesting structure over here. We have the karmon, we have the nesachim, we have within the nesachim the solas blula b'shemen plus the niske yayin, and we're saying that every single element here in this structure is independent, which means that you can have a karmon without the Nesachim, and it'll bring the Nesachim later on. And within the Nesachim, you can have Solus Veshemim without Yayin. You can have Yayin as a Nesach Yayin without Solus Veshemim. However, with regard to Solus and Shemim, then we apply the principle of Mi'akvin Zedze, which means that Blila, to mix the shemen together with the solace, the refined flour, the wheat flour, is absolutely critical. Now we're up to medidas hanesachim viki dusha. Now, when we say kidusha, we're referring to a klisharis. Shneas Ronin Soles shall niske Ayal, who said the Ayal doubles it to Shneas Ronin. Shloshes Esronin, when they say par o Egel, lo nimdidu bikli shores shall Shnayim u Shloshes Ronin. Elod, how you need Dodi bikli shall Isaron, Shnayim the Sholosh P. So what we're doing is we have one medida for all the categories of the animal, and that medida is one each sorrow. So that's fine in the case of a keves, and in the case of a kizba, an ez, etc. But when we get to the ayal, which needs two esronim, or the power that needs three esronim of solace, we're going to have to repeat the performance of Medida twice or thrice. You and I would have said, why not just get yourself a Kli that could measure two Esronim or three Esronim and do it in one shot? No, no, no. We need the same Medida and the same Kli for all the Sachim. Just in the cases of the Ayal and the Par, we're going to have to repeat the performance over and over again of Medida in order to get to its own three or so. I will shemen the Yayin. So let's say, for example, you have a Par and the Par needs three Esron. 
Now we have to be modeh, shemen, and yain. And we said in the case of a par and an egel, let's just review. We need chatzi ahin shemen, vechatzi ahin yain. We went from shlishes, from revias to shlishes to chatzi. We don't take the same medida and the same kli that we used for a keves or an ayal, which was a revius ayin or a shlishis ayin, but rather we have a separate kli which holds a volume of a chatzi ayin, and we're going to use that to measure the shemen and the yayin of a part. This shall ayal. We said that ayal jumps from revius ahin shemen revius ahin yayin to shlishis ahin yayin the shemen is modin bekli shel shlish ahin. And the keves has its own kli medida for revius ahin. So we're basically distinguishing between the soles on the one hand, and the shemen and the yayin on the other hand. In the case of soles, we only have one kli for all carbonos, all types of animals, and that will hold an isaron of soles. We're going to have to do repeat performances to be mode, two esronim in the case of an ayal, three esronim in the case of a pa. But with regard to shemen and yayin, we're going to have three different types of kale. It's going to be a shoe that is custom made. You know, it's like Cinderella's shoe. It, it has to fit whether it is a revia sahin yayin to shemen in the case of a keves, whether it's a shlisha sahin yayin to shemen in the case of an ayal, whether it's a chati yayin yayin to shemen in the case of a par. When, you know, we've done the Medida, we're ready with the Sochim, we have the, you know, the mixture of the Shemen and the Soles, we have the Yayin, everything has been measured out perfectly to fit that particular Karman. But does that Medida effectuate Kiddush? And the answer is no. The kiddush is suspended until the shechita of the zemach. And, and again, we've seen on many different occasions in the world of Kodshim that you could have two parts of an avoda, and one part has an impact on the other part. Here's a perfect example where the shechita zemach is going to sanctify the resachim. The Soles, the Shemen, and the Yai. And here we're going to study a machlokas between Rabbeinu Gershon, Ma'ora Gola, and the Baleatosis, which you'll see here in footnotes number Tzadi Aleph and Tzadi Beis. Let's start with the Shitas Atosis. Tosis holds that when we talk about Kiddush, which means Kiddusha Sagruf, it's an all or nothing proposition. There are no, there's no gradation. There are no gray areas. Either there is Kiddush Sagruf or there is not Kiddush Sagruf. And therefore, Tosis comes to the conclusion that Aim Hanesachim Miskachim Klau which means that up until the Shechita Sazevach, there's no Psul Kodesh. Let's say that the Sochim were taken out of the Azara, which is normally a Psul of Yotze, or let's say that the Sochim were left overnight, which is normally a Psul of Lina, none of those Psulim will apply because it was not yet Kiddush. And Rabbeinu Gershon disagrees. He says that you already did the Medida 
in a klishares, and therefore, like any mincha, the klishares is makadish the mincha, and therefore, there will be a psul of yotze or lina even before the shechita. When the Mishnah says that the Kiddush is suspended until the, the Shechita, the connection that links these Nesachim, this Nesach, with this Karman is clinched with the Shechita and the Zevach. Before the Shechita, you can take these Nesachim that have been sanctified in a Kli Shares at the time of Medida, and you can attach them, it's a free-for-all. The Nesachim don't take on a specific identity related to this particular Zebach, even though you prepare the Nesachim, the Soles, together with the Shemen, and the Yain for this particular Zebach, it's a carte blanche. There's no identity until the Shechita. The Shechita will connect the Zeba inextricably with this Nesa. And you cannot use this Nesachim for any other car, but that's only after Shechita. It's understood that when it says in the Mishnah, Eim Hanesa Miskadish Ad Shechita, it means it has no Kedush. And the Kedush HaGuf that normally is effectuated by a klitsharis and should in this case be effectuated by the Medina is suspended and is dependent upon the Zeva. It's the Zeva that's going to generate the Kedusha Saguf in the Nesachim. And the Nafkamina is a tremendous Nafkamina because these Nesachim before Shechita will not become disqualified neither by, by Lina nor by Yotze if it was taken out of the Yotze. Now, all this is a discussion about Karbanos Chova of an Ola or a Shlomin. Emir Tzashem, in the next discussion that we'll have, which as far as I'm concerned could take place on Sunday, I don't know what your schedule is on Sunday, Maybe you're going to the mikvah in honor of Shavuos, so you don't have time, but next discussion will be about a nidav, a voluntary, a voluntary call, and the sochim that accompany a voluntary call.